Torej, nahajamo se na gradišču Baba pri Slavini. To je eno od štiri gradišču v okolici Slavine, pa eno od več desetih na celotnem tem notransko-kraškem prostoru. Na njem raziskujemo že do skoraj en mesec, skupaj smo pa sodelujemo pri projektu Štirje partnerji, sicer Narodni muzej Slovenije, Inštitut za arheologijo, pri ZRC Sazu, Park vojaške zgodovine v Pivki, ter naši kolegi z onkraj Luže iz Univerze v Oškož v Vinskonsinu. Prav z njimi smo letos, da tako rečem, začeli izvajati tako imenovano poletno šolo arheologije in upam, da je ta naša prva akcija letos, ki bi se morala že zgoditi seveda že prej, ampak zaradi pač korone in tako naprej smo malo odložili, je šele začetek nekega dolgega in plodnega sodelovanja. Tako da na samih izkopavanjih sodeluje devet študentev iz Združenih držav, prav tako dva profesorja in pač ostali kolegi tukaj iz Slovenije. Tako da se naša raziskovalna skupina gibla okrog številke 15. Zakaj ravno tukaj, zakaj ravno na babi pri Slavini? Po sedaj zbranih podatkih o življenju na gradiščih vse kaže, da je bava pri Slavini v nekje sredi prvega stoletja pred našim štetjem doživela bride konec, zaznamovali so jo dramatični dogodki, očitno povezani z delovanjem Julija Cezarja v teh krajih ali pa z delovanjem njegovega naslednika, Oktavijana, kasnejšega prvega rimskega cesarja Augusta. Zakaj? Zato, ker najmlajše najdve z tega najdišča so povezani z rimskimi vojaki, Najdenih je bilo predvsej svinčenih napadalnih izstrelkov za pračo, potem tudi ostanki čevlev rimskih vojaških sandalov. Prav tako nimamo kasnejših naučnih najdev. Se pravi, v tistih časih, ko se zdi, so rimljani to najdišče, to utrjeno naseljene gradišče oblegali in ga uničili. Samo domnevamo lahko, kaj se je zgodilo z njihovimi prebivalci, glede na analogije s podobnimi situacijami, ki so izpričani tudi v zgodovinskih verih, recimo padec nezakcija za vzetje metuloma, vemo, da so se te zgodbe končale predvsej krvavo zabranitelje, bodi si z skupinskimi samomori ali pa z množičnimi eksekucijami. Nobena skrivnost ni, da čeprav Juli Cezar je danes v zgodovini zapisan kot največji rimljan, kot slavni vojskovodja, je pač v svojem delovanju postopil tudi genocidno. Morda je do upora tukajšnjih prebivalcev v tistih časih botrovalo lavno to, da se je Juli Cezar, ki je imel zimski tabor v Ogleju, pripravljal na osvajanje Galije, In je potem med skupnostmi v zaledju ogleja, takratne akvileje, novačil za rimsko vojsko, ker je potreboval ogromno vojakov za osvojitev keltski kraljestev v Galiji in verjetno prav pri silnemu novačenju, to je pač teza, bo trovalo upiranje tukajšnjih prebivalcev in posledično tudi vojaške akcije proti potencijalnim upornikom. Torej, sedaj se nahajamo na babi, na tem najdišču in raziskujemo eno od poglobitev znotri gradišča, poglobitev, ki se vidi že v terenu in kjer domevamo ostanke arhitekture tistega časa. Našli smo predvsej odlomkov lončenine, torej kuhenskega posodja, ljudje so seveda jedli, pidli, se prehranjevali normalno, našli smo ostani kotiži, statev, prav tako kar predvsej železove žlindre ob samem vhodu v ta potencijalni objekt, tako da domnevamo, da je morda celo povezan z nekim, da slutimo tukaj v tem izkopanjem neko kovaško dejavnost, ki seveda tudi ne bi bila nobeno presenečena, kaj te življenje gradiščar je bilo dobro organizirano, zgradili so mogočno obzige, ki so jih vrovala pred napadalci, v tem primeru očitno neuspešno, proti Rimljanom. Znotri gradišča se je pa odvijalo vsedanje življenje, kuhanje, prehranjevanje, izdelovanje lončenine, gradnja, koč, brunarica, kovaška dejavnost, popravljanje orodi in tako naprej. 
prav tako tkanje, ne, o čemer priče tista otež za uh, uh, statve. Tako da uh, veselimo se, kaj bomo še odkrili v prihodnje. Verjamem, da to začetek ene uh, daljše raziskovalne kampanje, ki bomo ponavljali skozi leta in tako iz zluščili iz teh skromnih na prvi pogled ostankov verjetno zanimive in bogate zgodbe iz davne preteklosti teh krajev. Um, so I came to Slovenia 10 years ago when I started working on my PhD. Um, now I'm a professor, so we train students to be archaeologists as well. So we set up what's called a field school, which is where students actually learn to excavate. So we brought over nine American students. They're mostly from Wisconsin, um, but one is also from Mississippi, so some variety. Brought them to Slovenia, and they're living here in Slavina. And they're actually learning to excavate by digging a real archaeological site because it's the best way to learn. Um, and they've been loving it so far. They're learning a lot about different types of artifacts, excavation techniques, about Slovenian culture and history. So it's been a really nice experience. Um, we're hoping to keep coming back in the future. Um, we have a lot still to learn about this area. So that's our goal. So what's been really fascinating about this site in particular is the large number of uh, zlindra or slag that we're finding. Slag is a byproduct of iron working, iron smelting, but also iron smithing. And so with that large amount, what we think that we're actually excavating here is not a residential house, but a workshop, an iron workshop. Um, Unfortunately, you know, we have to finish up soon, and so we can't excavate the entirety of the structure. So this is our plan for the coming years, for next year, to continue on this collaboration with the National Museum, the Institute for Archaeology, the Park of Military History, and finish up and excavate this second half of the house, as well as expand, expand our trenches to um, further in either direction, um, as well as bringing more students to experience, you know, this, this wonderful region and, and wonderful country. anthropology students at uh, University of Wisconsin Oshkosh and um, well Kelly's yeah, goes um, to UW Milwaukee <laughs> and so we're all um, pretty interested in archaeology as a field possibly as a future because um, anthropology has like four main fields and so when you're an anthropology student you try to figure out which of the four fields you want to go into so this is just an experience for us um, maybe for those of us who don't know exactly where we want to go into, like which of the four fields. And those of us like Callie, who, is, who, are, who do want to be an archaeologist, this is a good chance to like, it's, it's good for our resumes. <laughs> Yeah, so there was a lot of like school like things that we had to do through our university to make sure that like we were ready to go on this trip and that like we would be able to go on this trip. So a lot of university prep. I know like I myself did like a lot of research on Slovenia just to like learn more about like the culture and the people and the language and like the different cities. So I did a lot of that and like looking at like the weather and the climate to see like what I would need to bring and what it would be like here. Mm -hmm. For me, it was kind of similar. Um, first, there was like the application process. We all knew the professors beforehand, um, so there was an interview process uh, just to make sure we weren't weirdos or that we weren't, you know, psychopaths on here that were interested in what we're doing. And um, so um, there was a whole process. There's the interview process, and then after we were pretty much all accepted. Um, but we're still good. Yeah, <laughs> we were pretty much all accepted right off the bat, um, but after that there was more like meeting with the professors, multiple meetings, um, a lot, a lot of paperwork that we had to fill out, like months and months of paperwork, and it just got very exhausting, but it's all worth it because we're here. Mm -hmm. What about you? Well, yeah. I've, you had a different experience. 
I've done a field school before, but only in Wisconsin, and I have a classics major, so I was like, I need to do work in classics, too. So I have this, and, like, Simon is majoring in archaeology specifically, so he needs this to graduate, whereas, like, us, it's, like, an extra class. It's definitely a lot different than I thought it would be. Um, they said that the site would just be a short walk from the B&B. &B. I didn't realize it was going to be like a whole hike up here. Um, yeah, it's still a short walk. It is a short walk, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I didn't expect so much technology to go into it. The whole GIS, QGIS, LIDAR. Um, I didn't I didn't anticipate the amount of technology that there would be in there. Um, I anticipate the physical labor, of course. For me, it's kind of awesome to be here because I had Dr. Fry for four years. So I've heard about this field school that she was trying to plan for four years since my freshman year in college. So to actually like be here and be on this trip is so awesome because I've heard so much about the site in this country from her that I was just so excited that like I get to be here and I get to be doing archaeology in Slovenia in like a site that she works at. So it's awesome to be here. Yeah, it's cool that we're like the first American students mm -hmm. here. We get to be the guinea pigs, we're winning. <laughs> I feel kind of honored almost because even this video right now, I feel like we're getting so much press just from being here. <laughs> and like, we're right just there. students, we're just American students. But. It's sexy. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I love it here. I want to come back so many more times. Like, I feel like. We've seen a lot of the country, but I feel like there's so many more parts of it that we haven't seen yet that I would like love to explore because it's truly stunning. Like everywhere that we've gone, it's just been so absolutely beautiful and everybody has just been so kind and willing to listen to our terrible pronunciations of Slovene words. So it's been truly amazing. Um, especially for me, I'm an anthropology and history major. A lot of Americans really, really dream of coming to Europe and the the tickets and like coming to Europe is so expensive that this is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. And um, to be here for five weeks over a month, that's insane. Most people go for like a week to Rome if they can afford it. Um, most people just travel within the US and that's their life. Um, so it's definitely a life changing opportunity to be here and to like experience cultures. I'm very interested in cultural anthropology and to, to uh, notice the the very tiny differences between humans here and humans in the U.S. It's very interesting for me to analyze personally. It's just weird as like a classics person, like because they usually talk about Italy and Greece. You don't hear about the stuff in between or like where people went. So learning about that stuff is interesting. I'm also scared of the fourteen thousand caves, like the to cave. fall in them. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna fall into well, a 14, cave. Fourteen thousand or more. I don't think you're just gonna like walk into one. <laughs> Another thing, Wisconsin is very flat. When we first got in here, we flew into Ljubljana. The first thing we see are the mountains. All of us were blown away. Um, like uh, the part of the U.S. that we're from, it's really flat. There are mountains, obviously. There are the Appalachian Mountains. There are there's like Colorado, New Mexico. Um, a lot of hiking in the U.S., but not where we're from. So we don't really see mountains that much. So to just look around and see them everywhere, it's it's almost like um, we're starting to take them for granted, but we shouldn't because we're going to go back to just farmland after this. <laughs> Thanks for caring about culture heritage. <laughs>